Hi, Steve Yang at this Rural Symposium 25 in Boca Raton. I am here with Bruce Scarpelli, Executive Director and CEO of Brazil uh, at Centaurus Metals. Hey, great to have you. Thank you. Uh, if you can just tell us about briefly about yourself and yeah. just uh, your role there and uh, sure. we'll move to the company. Sure. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, an engineer, background is engineering. I've been with the company for 15 years now, joined Centaurus in 2010. And in, the, in that time, we've developed a couple of iron ore projects. And the, currently, the most important project, our flagship project, is the Jaguar nickel sulfide project in the, in the north of Brazil. Awesome. Well, in regards to Brazil, my understanding is that all your projects are in Brazil. You guys are an Australian-based company. Correct. Uh, but you've got multiple projects. I think you have three or so. Is that correct? Yes. So we're listed in Australia in the ASX, but we all our investments, all our efforts go into Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a very uh, mining friendly jurisdiction, very stable regulations and legislation. Uh, and we've been doing so for the last 17 years. So we have a iron ore project, we have a copper exploration project that we just started drilling last year. But our main project is the Jaguar Nickel Sulfide project that we acquired from Vale back in 2019. And we've taken it from 300,000 tons of uh, contained nickel to 1.2 million tons of contained nickel in the space of four, four years. And we've also uh, been able to get all of the necessary licenses. So today the project is, is fully ready to go. Um, what we're gonna do next with respect to Jaguar is, is the funding. So the CapEx is $380 million, and that's what we plan to work on in the next, uh, in the next six months to be able to make a financial investment decision in the first quarter of next year. So in terms of, so you have nickel, you also have copper, yeah. and then you have iron ore. Yeah. So which one's your flagship project? Well, it, it's Jaguar. Jaguar. So Jaguar, it's, uh, it's a world-class deposit. It sits up there with the, among the two or three projects uh, with the biggest deposits in the world that have not been developed yet. It's, as I said, it's got a, a, a capex of $380 million, NPV of $735 million, and an IRR of 34%, and that's based on long-term uh, nickel price. Uh, the payback period for that project is 1.8 years, so very short payback period. And, um, and the, the two main aspects of, the, of Jaguar, very low operating costs, so $9,800 per ton, okay. which puts us in the first quartile of the cost curve, and very good ESG credentials. We are going to uh, emit only about six tons of CO2 equivalent to every ton of nickel that we produce. And that places us within the 10% with the lowest greenhouse gas emissions in the world, in the, in the nickel space. How much nickel do you have? We have 138 million tons of nickel at 0.87%, which gives us 1.2 million tons of contained metal. And that, that in, in today's nickel price, represents about $14 billion of in situ value. Okay. Uh, so, how significant is that in comparison to other nickel companies? Uh, yeah, well, it, the first important differentiation we have to do is between sulfides and laterites. Okay. Laterites, they're much more common, the laterite deposits. Sulfides are rare, and the big difference between laterite and, and sulfides is sulfides are much cheaper to process. Okay. So, to get from the in situ uh, ore to a concentrate, the cost is usually about $4,000 cheaper per ton for laterites than for, for uh, sorry, for sulfides than for laterites. Okay. So what do you have there? Sulfides. Okay. Ours is a, is a nickel sulfide deposit. So they end up being the same quality. It's just it, the, the cost more is expensive. significantly less. Yeah, for sulfides, it's, it's, it's significantly less. So that gives you a significant advantage over other nickel companies. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, so in terms of nickel, uh, I, I like nickel. Yeah. I believe in nickel, and that's why we have you here. And, sure. uh, we're, I'm coming to you as an accredited investor. 
uh, looking to invest. Uh, full disclosure for our listeners, I am not currently an investor, but that could change yeah. uh, as I'm learning about your company and I want our followers to learn about you guys as well. Uh, if you can tell us, what is nickel used for? Why is nickel, sure. my understanding is it's a strategic metal. Sure. Yeah. Uh, why is it so significant? Yeah. Okay. So historically, nickel has been used for stainless steel. That's the main demand for nickel. And it has been so for the last 20 years. In the last five years, the EV, uh, so nickel is used in the battery as a cathode material. So you see the NCM batteries, it's nickel, cobalt, and manganese. There's some technology that removes the cobalt and you only have nickel and manganese. So nickel is used in EVs, uh, and that's why in EV batteries, and that's why it's called a strategic mineral, because it goes into the batteries. Currently, about 60% of the nickel goes into stainless, stainless steel, and about 30 to 35% go into EVs. But the forecast sees that changing, and the EV side of the demand uh, taking over the, the stainless steel demand. Stainless steel uh, grows historically, has grown historically at a rate of uh, 3%. So that has sustained the, the, the nickel market uh, throughout history. And so you guys are ramping up. You guys are permitted already. Yes. How difficult is it to get a permit in Brazil? So it took us two and a half years from start to finish. Okay. We lodged our environmental impact statement in July 2022. Okay. And just now in March 2025, a couple of months ago, we've got the ultimate license that allows us to start building the project. So okay. two and a half years. And, you know, we've been in the country for 15 years. So we know the legislation, the regulations well, and we've built uh, a reputation for being, uh, you know, good citizens and working well with the community. Nowadays, the environmental license is important. It's necessary. Mm -hmm. But the social license to operate is even more important. Okay. And I think what has helped us get the license in such a short space of time is that the regulators have seen the support that we get from the local communities where Jaguar is. Right. So are you there all the time in Brazil? That, yes, that's where I'm, you're located? I'm based in Brazil. I'm based in, in Belo Horizonte, where our head office is. The project Jaguar is in the north of Brazil. Uh, and we have, you know, an office in the town that's closest to the, uh, to the, to the mine site. So around the area, can you tell us about what's there infrastructure wise? Do we sure. have roads, sure. water? We're, we're 40 kilometers north of a uh, sealed, you know, paved road. And that paved road is the, is the one that we're going to use to truck the product up to the port in, in the same state, the state of Pará. So 40 kilometers dirt road and then 950 kilometers on a sealed road to the port. There's a high voltage power line running just 36 kilometers away from the project, and we've got the license for that as well. Okay. Um, so the plan is to build a 36 kilometer uh, long uh, uh, power line, 230 kV, uh, and that's relatively short. You know, okay. 36 kilometers is relatively short, and, and the cost of the power line won't, you know, it, it will be it's something that's included in the CapEx and we decided to tap into high voltage because that gives us more reliable power and okay. not subject to so many oscillations as a, as a lower voltage uh, okay. lower voltage power. Let's shift a little bit and talk about share structure. Sure. If we can talk about how many shares outstanding you have as well as where the warrants and options are written. Yeah, so the share structure at the, mo structure at the moment has, uh, we have about 35% of institutional investors 5% is held by management, okay. and the other 60% is retail investors. So we got about uh, 500 million shares outstanding. Um, yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, our shareholder base has been with us for a long time. Even when we shifted from iron ore and diversified into base metals, yeah. they have been very, very supportive of, of the work that we do in Brazil. So what is the plan? I mean, you're, you guys, what's the next step? What can investors project or what are the milestones for the next three, six months? Yeah, so the, uh, Jaguar is ready to go. We don't need to do anything else from a uh, exploration perspective, engineering perspective, and, uh, and licensing perspective. The only, uh, the hurdle that we have to overcome to start construction is finding the funding. As I said, it's $380 million, the CapEx, and we plan to 
uh, square that away with 200 million coming from a strategic investor at the project level and the remaining 180 coming from, from debt, from a bank loan. And Brazil, in the last five years, has pushed very hard for, uh, for the critical minerals, mining sector to grow, mm -hmm. and the government has promoted that. And in, 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 the, in the last two years, uh, many finance uh, initiatives have come about in the National Development Bank, targeted specifically at critical minerals. And that's what we're looking to tap into to get the $180 million for so okay. that piece of the, of the funding. How much capital do you have right now? 13 million Aussie dollars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so for an investor, we would like to look at the potential upside yeah. and maybe the risk as well, just kind of being honest about that. Uh, where do you see that for Centaurus? Yeah. Uh, where do you see the upside? Uh, what can investors potentially look forward to? What kind of yeah. the return are we looking at? Yeah, well, the upside will come from the when we when we get a solution for the for, for the funding for Jaguar. I think once that's you know that's done, uh, there's you 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 have to expect that the nickel price is at the bottom or very close to it. So with an appreciation of the nickel price and the funding uh, completed, I think the share price will have to go up. Just to give you an idea, today our market cap is 120 million US. Okay. With Jaguar, at current nickel prices, yeah. we will generate a, more than $100 million in free cash every year. If nickel stays the same? At, at current prices, at current prices. Is there any reason why you would expect nickel to go the other way? Uh, I don't see reason, any reason why, especially because the main source of nickel today is Indonesia, and it's the nickel there comes from lateritic uh, deposits, okay. and the grades are falling. Five years ago, the average uh, nickel grade in Indonesia was 1.8%. Uh, last year was 1.64, and this year is below 1.6. So with declining head grades, the cost goes up. I, I, I think we are at the bottom or very close to the bottom of the, of the nickel price. So it, it, it's only upwards from here. So let's say someone is excited about nickel. Yeah. Uh, you know, why Centaurus? Well, we have the second largest nickel sulfide deposit in the world. The only one that's, largest, that's, that's larger than ours is Kabanga, but Kabanga still needs licensing and it's got an, a capex that I think it's, a, it's over a billion dollars. Okay. So I think there's, you know, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking for nickel, Centaurus is, is, the, uh, is the, uh, the company to invest in. Uh, my understanding is that you guys are also a copper play. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So we, uh, we started drilling in the, at the Boinovo uh, copper project, also in the Carajás region in the north of Brazil. We started drilling last year. Had some really good hits. We had uh, more than 30 meters at 1.6% copper. We had about five meters at close to 9% copper. And the work that we're doing now is trying to understand the geology to be able to identify uh, the continuity between these intersections that we had. Well, just looks like there's a lot to look forward to for our listeners. Uh, if they wanted to follow you, if yeah, first of all, do you have any other news that you can share with our listeners that maybe they can look forward to in the coming months? Or? Yeah, well, we're actively we're actively uh, searching for uh, good projects in Brazil. That's where our expertise is. We we know yeah. how to operate that, and we've done so in the last fifteen years. Um, you know, nickel sulfide deposits, copper uh, copper deposits, and you know, the good thing about being in Carajás is there's infrastructure, there's power, there's there's workforce. There's roads, and uh, speaking specifically about Boinovo, we're only 20 kilometers away from, a, from an existing copper processing plant. Okay. So we, the deposits that we find, they don't need to be that big to be economically feasible. Okay. So we can just mine and truck it to the existing processing plant. So you said you're also looking for other projects at Correct. this time? Correct, yeah. Okay. Greenfields projects where we come in, we license, we drill, we prove up the resource, and then we take it to take it to production. All right. Well, if our listeners have any other questions or a way to reach you, what's the best way to reach you? Well, uh, go to our website, 
www.centaurus.com.au and then you find our contact information. Now, where are you trading and what are your tickers? We are trading at uh, 34 cents uh, Australian dollars and our ticker is CTM at the, in the ASX and the OTC is CTTZF. Uh, again, uh, currently I'm not an investor, but uh, I mean, I'm, the more I talk to you, the more excited I get. It's been a pleasure giving us this time and letting Good. us learn about Centaurus. And All right. It's been a great meeting you. Thank you for that. Yeah.